There are many rivalries in this world, some more popular than others. Yankees vs. Red Sox, Biggie vs. Tupac, Chicago Pizza vs. New York Pizza, a Raid Owl video vs. literally any female on the planet. But in the tech industry, two notable ones come to mind, Mac OS vs. Windows and Intel vs. AMD. But today, we don't care about rivalries. We're going to get real close and personal with the help of this guy. <sighs> I feel like it looks bigger on camera than it really is. This is the Metallic Gear Neo Cube, and quite frankly, it's the reason why this video even exists. I'm gonna try to get straight to the point. I've always wanted to do a dual system build, meaning that two systems will actually go into one tower, but I found that all cases that support dual systems are just way too bulky and don't really look that good. And not saying that this is small because it's not, but when I saw it on Newegg, I thought that the aesthetics of this were just so much more appealing than a lot of the other cases out there. So I bought it. And of course, since I bought it, I had to do a dual system build and nothing sounded more clickbaity and nothing sounded more fun to do than an Intel and AMD build with Windows and Mac all running in the same system. So that's what we're gonna do. And the reason it's not built yet is because I ran a poll on my channel and all of you perverts, your words, not mine, you guys voted for it, said that you really wanna see me build the PCs when they're featured on the video. So that's what we're gonna do. You're gonna see me put this together and run it for the first time. So let's hope this goes well. All right, I'm gonna put this on the ground now because it's taking up a lot of space and we're gonna go through the parts. Ah. All right, so the plan is to run the main system as our AMD um, Windows gaming machine and the secondary system as a Hackintosh Mac OS build. So the AMD build is going to be running on this Asus ROG Strix B550F gaming motherboard. I've already put in the Ryzen processor, as well as the RAM and NVMe drive because I didn't want them laying around and I'm reusing parts from previous builds uh, because I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not a super popular uh, YouTube channel and I do have to pay for all these parts myself. So um, yeah, I'm reusing parts. So with this build, we are going with a Ryzen 7 5700G. Now I've used those in a couple of videos before, so you've probably seen that if you're subscribed to my channel, but um, if you're new, I will link uh, one of those up in the corner, but that's what we're going with for the Windows machine. We are going with two sticks of 16 gigabytes a piece of Ballistics Crucial RAM. I believe it's 3,600 mega transfers per second or megahertz, whatever. And for storage, we are going with a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive which is PCI Gen 3. And this wouldn't be a gaming machine without a graphics card. So here we have an Asus ROG Strix. Is it even ROG? Well, it's Strix. So it's gonna match our motherboard, but this is a RTX 2070 Super. And I paid too much money for this on eBay because getting a graphics card right now sucks. And for our Hackintosh build, that is going to be this tiny little guy right here, which uh, might look a little familiar because it's also reused from my last video where I built a tiny desktop home server. I'll link that up above, but we kind of recycled this build. I'm using a Intel i7-4770 um, that's four cores, eight threads, and 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 mega transfers uh, RAM. So Nothing special. We do have a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive in here, but we don't need anything too powerful for our secondary system because I don't really plan to do, you know, too much with it. And of course we're gonna need to power all of that. So, ooh, err, this thing is heavy. So we have, uh, it's like the biggest freaking part on the table. We have a Fantex Revolt uh, dual system, thousand watt platinum power supply. And that is so we can power both systems at the same time, off one PSU. And these look so nice. Look how nice this looks. That it's got like brushed metal, Ooh, even though nobody's gonna see it. I really always wanted to do a dual system build and I've never really uh, had a reason to pull the trigger until now. So that's what we're doing. And I know I can hear 
all of you guys heading to the comment section to type out, you know, why are you doing this? Uh, you know, you could easily just get, you know, a Windows machine and a separate, you know, Mac machine and it'd just be way more efficient and blah, blah, blah. And I actually have a good counter to that. Shut up. I'm doing this for fun. Well, let's get to building. Oh boy. See, so the reason why I build these before um, and not during the video is because it just takes up so much time and I gotta like be entertaining and try to be funny and shit. Oh well. Oh, I forgot something. Um, to cool the 5700G, I am reusing the AIO from a previous build. This is a Cooler Master 240 uh, millimeter AIO. I mean, I'll link all these parts down below, but um, I've used this in another video and figured, you know, this is perfect. So that's what we'll be using to cool it. All right, it's party time. So first thing, I'll show you is around the back, you'll see this is pretty standard. This is, you know, what you'd expect out of a regular PC. But if you notice over here, there's kind of a cutout. Okay, so apparently my uh, camera stopped recording. Uh, luckily, I didn't really do much. Uh, I took the panels off and now I'm about to install the power supply. So that's the first thing we are doing. We are installing the power supply which is usually what you want to do first because you'd like to get your cables routed and stuff um, beforehand just so that when you put your motherboard in uh, you don't have to reach around all those tight places to get that pesky 8-pin uh, CPU uh, plugged in. Plus it's easy, it's hard to mess up, so you want to start off with a W, you know? Make it feel good. So this comes with a whole bunch of cables because obviously it's a dual system build. So you need enough cables for two systems. But what do we need? 24 pin, CPU, another CPU, third CPU, and PCIe for the graphics card. That should be all we need, but we'll keep these close. Now we need three CPU connectors because our main board actually has an eight pin and a four pin. So my math is correct, that's 12 pins. One, two, and for the graphics card, boom. So for the secondary system, I'm gonna hold off because it's just gonna be sitting right here. So it's gonna be really easy to get to. Um, we don't have to worry about weird cable management or anything. So we're gonna hold off on that for now and install the motherboard. So let's flip this guy around. Actually, let's run this. I believe we're gonna need both of these run up to the top. <clears throat> Yum. All right, now we can put in the motherboard. So it already includes the standoffs, all the standoffs that we should need. Looks like it's properly in place for your regular ATX motherboard. And this motherboard has the built-in backplate which I think all motherboards should be doing in 2021. And now, screw it in. How do I keep losing the screws? Ow. All right, found screws. Use is pa. Let me reiterate that I'm doing, you know, a base AMD uh, Windows system with a secondary Mac system, you don't have to do that. There are plenty of ways to do dual systems. You can do a main Mac system with a secondary Linux system. You can do a home server in the main one and a gaming one in the back. You can do two Mac systems. You can do whatever you want, doesn't matter. But this is what I chose to do, so that's what we're doing. You're watching, aren't you? So, okay, motherboard's in, looks good. Next step, I guess we'll just plug these in while we're here while we're in the neighborhood. Next up, we are going to install the AIO. Now I already have the fans on here and ready to go. So this should be painless. I do need thermal paste though. All right, tilt you up. And it's gonna go directly on top. It looks like it has uh, room for either a probably 360 or a 280, but we are just using a 240, so we are good. And you're gonna go like so. One, I'm only using four screws, but this is good for now. And now we can put the actual heat sink part on. Thermal paste. You really don't need a lot. 
Now, what I put honestly might be too much. Um, a little goes a long way. Never mentioned how I hate these tension mounts that a lot of AMD systems have, because I hate these tension mounts that a lot of AMD systems have. So I'm gonna slide you in there and tighten up. Okay, that was actually pretty painless. Um, so we have RGB and fan controller. So I believe this does have a dedicated pump. Oh my God, shut up train. All right, we're gonna save all the RGB stuff for the last because um, I find it easier to do all the RGB stuff at the end. Okay, so prime example of why I like to run the eight pin uh, first, because if this was installed and the motherboard was installed and we had to route these through and plug them in, it might be a pain. So we'll worry about cable management and all that stuff later. We'll tuck these behind for now. That's future Brett's problem. Okay, 24 pin. So let's go ahead and grab our 24 pin. So we just run through here. Oh, these aren't very, very flexible, but that's okay. And while we're plugging stuff in, we're gonna go ahead and do the front panel in USB. I really don't wanna take that off because it looks like it's gonna be a pain to get back on. Too late. All right, what do we have here? HD audio, power switch, RGB, USB 3, SATA power for I believe the LED D's maybe on the case, uh, RGB controller, reset switch, power switch for system two. Ah, okay, so this is a secondary system one. And then we have this USB-C 3.1 connector that we do not have a port for on the motherboard. So this is just going to have to hang out. Let's get these all plugged in. That's something we should have done before. We got it. Power switch. Oh, I can't see. All right, theoretically, we should be able to boot this, but of course I want to get everything installed. So let's get the secondary system installed. Oh wait, I forgot the graphics card. Let's us install the GPU. It's a chonky boy. We're in. Ah. Ta-da! Yeah, now we can install our secondary system. So the way to do it is cool. Um, it goes kind of inverted up behind the main motherboard. So we're gonna move all this stuff out the way. Cable management comes later, famous last words. All right, that is kind of cool. So we do actually have more room for an even taller cooler. So right now I have the Noctua NH uh, L9i, which is an extremely low profile cooler, um, but it looks like you can fit something even bigger back here, which is surprising, so. One thing to note that uh, we won't be utilizing today, but you can actually fit a dual slot, uh, half height PCI device in this secondary system if you want to. Like I said, we're not using that today, but I did get a half height two slot uh, GTX 1050 Ti. So this is something that we could actually utilize in this case and something I'll probably be doing in a future video. So subscribe if that sounds Cool. Okay, and then this can just plug in here. Cable management comes later. Then our last plug is this guy. Okay, that should be it. So here it is, rough draft. Uh, a couple things. You'll notice I have no case fans. And that's because they were supposed to come in today, but uh, they were delayed. I think they're coming in tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna put those in, but right now I just want to test uh, just make sure everything's connected and boots. Um, I did already install my Hackintosh setup on the secondary system. I'm not really gonna cover that because I have a video dedicated to that. I will link that above if you wanna know how to do it. It's different for whatever system you're running depending on you know what hardware you have. But So you can just follow that guide or pick another guide. There's a lot of information out there about it. All right, let's plug you in. Let's try the Hackintosh first because that actually has an operating system installed already. Let's plug a mouse and keyboard in. And theoretically, when I click the reset button, it should turn on our secondary system and the fan should be spinning back here. Okay, in three, two, I don't know which one the reset switch is. One, okay. Okay, that turned on, but the primary system did not. And are we booting? All right, okay, here we are in. Mac OS running on my Hackintosh. And that's pretty cool. So now let's try to turn on the primary system and install Windows. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to this guy, hit the main power button in three, two, one. Okay, it's definitely running, working. Aha, we have posted, yeah. So that's all I'm gonna cover right now, uh, today, because I do wanna get those fans in and I'm going to install Windows and go through that all um, off screen, don't need to film that. So, well, it's gonna take me uh, 24 hours to get all of that done and install the fans. By the magic of YouTube, you guys don't have to wait at all. So, see you in a sec. And just like that, it's been a day. And as you can tell, um, I've added some fans. Now, these are pretty cheap ones I got off Amazon. Uh, it was three of them. It came with a controller for about $25, maybe $30. And I ordered a few more just in case, but I think it looks good. I'm not gonna lie. And as you can see, we are running Windows. So this is our primary uh, machine that you're looking at right now. And just to prove that this is in fact the machine, we can go into the software and change the color. And as I'm doing this, obviously the computer is changing color. I like yellow, so let's stay with yellow. Now, of course, we do have the PC on the back, which is our Hackintosh. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot that up now. All right, that is booting up. So now I'll just switch over to the Hackintosh. Bada bing, bada boom. And now, so it's really, it shouldn't be too loud. I mean, my mic's right here. I have one, two, three, uh, three case fans, two fans in the AIO, and this is a triple fan uh, GPU. And honestly, it's pretty quiet. We also do have the fan from the Noctua on the Hackintosh and all of it. I mean, I'm obviously right next to it so I can hear it, but I mean, it's, it's relatively quiet. And just like that, we are in Mac OS. And you can see on about this Mac, I'll probably punch in on it, but it is showing the i7 quad-core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and basically everything we have. Now, I do have a Wi-Fi card in there that's also set up to work, so we do have networking, uh, we have audio as well, and I mean, iMessage works, all my Apple account stuff works, can't complain. So that's it. I have Windows running on one side of the computer and Mac OS running on the other. But was it worth it? Probably not. Let me move this over and we can talk about it. All right, so was it worth it? No, I mean, for me personally, to make a YouTube video and to do something cool because I'm a huge nerd? Yes, but am I recommending you to do something like this? Absolutely not. I mean, if you want a gaming Windows machine and a Mac machine, just do them separately. I mean, it's so much easier to do it that way. The only benefit here is that you're saving a little bit of desk space and you're only using one power supply, but the power supply you have to use, uh, the dual system one, is way more expensive than just buying two separate ones. And like I've shown many times on this channel, you can build tiny desktop systems with great performance. So you're not really gaining much other than it's cool. I mean, and it is. But that doesn't mean I'm done with this and that I think it was all a waste. There are some scenarios where a single tower with two systems in it can be beneficial. Traditionally, you see this a lot with uh, streaming setups where your main system is playing the games and you have a secondary system with a capture card or something whose sole purpose is just to encode everything and stream it so that you're not handling both gaming and streaming on one CPU. I can see this thing being a really good use case for that, but there's a lot of options out there and that's what I wanna ask of you guys. Please comment down below of what you would do with this system because you know, I did this because it sounded like a good thumbnail title and something to do that sounded cool. But I know you guys are a lot more creative than me and you can come up with a lot better use cases for a dual system like that. So let me know what you guys think. So overall, I'm happy with it. I mean, the case was really easy to build in. It looks really good. I got to check that off the techie nerd bucket list of doing the dual system setup build. And now I'm going to lie awake at night wondering what my next build in that case should be. So please help me out in the comments. But that's it, if you want benchmarks, I mean, this is a Ryzen 5700G. I have two other videos on that. The other one's a Hackintosh, I have a video on that. It's just running an i7-4770. And if you want benchmarks on that, um, go back to the early 
2010s when this launched. And if you want to know how the case performs with airflow and temperatures. I did some simple benchmarks and everything ran perfectly fine. If you want some more advanced stuff, go watch channels like Hardware Canucks or uh, Gamers Nexus. They do a lot of in-depth stuff with case reviews and that's just not my jam. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below. Um, if you like content like this, be sure to subscribe. Uh, comment below on anything else you'd be interested in seeing. Thank you for watching and I will see you the next one.